So let me start streaming over here. And I think we are now live. And so welcome everybody. And uh, in this video, I am going to actually be talking about a magnificent book. Uh, actually, one of my favorite business authors. He's also a friend. I consider him a friend. Uh, Mark Schaefer, who is a fellow speaker at Social Media Marketing World. And we are going to be talking about, and the link is below uh, if you're watching this on YouTube. And the book is Marketing Rebellion. And uh, it, I'm telling you, it is right up my alley. Uh, I have really enjoyed Mark's other books, uh, namely Known uh, and The Tao of Twitter, um, which I'm a big fan of Twitter. And um, so Marketing Rebellion is one that's going to make a lot of marketers very uncomfortable uh, because Mark is probably one of the more researched uh, gurus, I would say, in uh, in in the world of marketing, and uh, and his his book is very very research based. So you'll you'll kind of pick up on that right away uh, as he goes through a lot of evidence to support his theses. And so let's start. And I've got three of them to share with you in this video. And I'm going to tell you that uh, I'm only about, I'm say I'm just under 50% of the way done with the book. So this video is based on some of the conclusions that I've immediately come to uh, after reading this book. And again, the name of the book, and you can search on Amazon right now, it's called Marketing Rebellion. And it is a fantastic book I'm listening to right now in Audible. And uh, I think the ebook comes out on uh, within just a few days, I believe. And you can get the paperback right now on Amazon as well. So and again, the book's author is Mark Schaefer. So the first thing we need to talk about and uh, what I absolutely took action on uh, was to start treating your customers the way that you want to be treated. I'm going to read just this little excerpt uh, that Mark made available in a free workbook that goes along. And by the way, uh, Mark created a lot of um, little uh, giveaways that go along with this book, um, which I will link as well below. Uh, in the uh, after afterwards, I'll put the link to some of these resources that makes uh, that he's made available. But he says that uh, marketing is the most interesting and rewarding profession, but, this is the words of Mark, I'm disheartened by all the ways that businesses abuse and disrespect customers. And unfortunately, you and I might be part of that, by the way. And by the way, we're all customers. Advertising isn't dead, but too often lazy marketers use it to abuse and annoy customers. We're over-reliant on automation in search of the marketing easy button. But it's unlikely that lazy marketing will work any longer. Sure, there's a place for technology, but it should be implemented in the service of customers. Marketing must be consensual with a fair value exchange between companies and customers. Now, we can make the evidence of the consumer rebellion everywhere. So why aren't we paying attention? The customers will eventually win. They always do. The market decides what we should be doing. So doesn't it make sense as smart business owners that we would try to get ahead of the curve, skate to where the puck is going to be, uh, and treat people with respect they deserve? Are you with me? So again, that was most of that. The vast majority of that was Mark uh, in his book, and he's kind of just laying out uh, a lot of groundwork. So let me ask you a question. So there are things that we do as marketers, and we do these things because we really, really want to engage with people. We don't want to lose leads. Uh, we don't want people to go to our website and then uh, we miss an opportunity to make a sale. Uh, someone joins our email list and and then hops off the email list before buying our stuff. And so I think as marketers, we would consider that to be a failure. And so what do we do? Well, sometimes we do some pretty, uh, just slime, not slimy, but just like, it's, it's this, we do the stuff that we hate, right? And so let me ask you a question. When you go to a website and someone says, 
download my free thing and then they say, well, wait a minute. And by the way, if you go to my website right now, I'm in the process of changing a lot of this stuff. Okay, I really firmly believe in this. Okay, and the first thing they do is they say, well, before you can take a look at this PDF, and again, if you go to my website, I have failed on this, okay? And I'm not saying you have to change this immediately if you disagree with this, but I'm headed in this direction. And so they say, in order for you to have the PDF, in order to you in, to engage with, in order for us to engage together, you're going to have to give me some stuff first, like that email address or that phone number. And only then will I let you take a look at this lead magnet, right? And so... People are probably thinking, okay, great, here's the email address. And so you kind of start off the relationship. It's like going on a first date and just asking for stuff or like, let's say you're networking at a business event and you just kind of come across a little salesy, like you're like trying to get stuff from other people before you give. And so the better way to do this, and again, I'm also a big fan of Bob Berg uh, and his book series, The Go-Giver, is also done The Go-Giver Leader, The Go-Giver Guide to Sales, The Go-Giver Sells More, I forget the exact title of that one. And then he has a new one called uh, The Go-Giver Influencer as well. Um, so again, we're changing all of this. Uh, we've seen the errors in our way. Why? Because again, as consumers, you and I don't like this. And so why would we force our uh, potential clients uh, to do the same thing when instead uh, the better thing would do would uh, to do would be to invite them to engage in a relationship with us. Just trust that people are smart. Stop treating people like numbers, like leads, like uh, you know that that you have to trick them to fall into the best sales funnel ever designed. Okay, sales funnels are dying. Mark makes a great point about that. So uh, this this whole like sales funnel thing where you're like, L uh, 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 you know, we're not going to go down this road. Instead, here's what you should do instead. Again, you give resources to people. You give content to people. Okay. You may have been able to get away with the traditional sales funnel one, two, three, four, five years ago. But those days are ending. And so today, we live in the age of YouTube. We live in the age of podcasts. Uh, when if someone wants to learn about Instagram marketing or LinkedIn or whatever, or public relations, uh, Facebook ads, whatever your thing is, okay, while you're holding out the goods, okay, they're going to your competitors. And your competitors are freely giving away all the stuff. And so it's time to catch up with that because you need to allow people to get to know, like, and trust you first and then treat them like smart people. And if they like you, they'll follow you. They'll come get you. They'll come get your stuff. They'll come schedule an appointment with you. They'll buy your low price thing and then kind of progress from there. So... Uh, so again, the, the traditional lead magnet stuff I think is dying. Next, if I go to your website, is it loaded with pop-ups? Are you trying to trick people into registering for a webinar? Are you trying to trick people and just pop, 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 all this other stuff to try to get their attention so that you can get that sacred email address? Well, again, how do you feel when you go to a website and you're inundated with pop-ups? maybe you might want to change your website if you're inundating people with pop-ups. I will let you know that we had a couple of pop-ups on our website and we are going to try changing that. Now, why do we put pop-ups on there? Well, because marketers will tell you that it works and you can convert, you know, maybe four, maybe 8% of the people who wouldn't have normally given you an email address. They go, okay, here's the email address. When instead it creates a poor uh, website experience or a poor relationship experience with 100% of people uh, that come to your website. So why sacrifice the 96% and give them a sour taste in their mouth just so you can get that 4%. So again, think of what you like and 
uh, what, you know, why do you choose to get engaged? Why do you engage with a brand or what kind of website do you go to? And then you're all like, bleh, bleh, no, thanks. Okay. Let's talk about some more. Uh, how about, uh, someone does get on your email list and your theory is to just to spam them to death until they give you money right? Instead, and you're just like selling to them. Um, that might not be a great tactic. Shy, hi, my Redenovda. I can't see the rest of the letters. Welcome, by the way. Um, so no, uh, maybe we should kind of hold back on the spam and instead focus on, so our commitment at Up My Influence is anytime we send an email out, it better be something really valuable. Um, it's not going to be a salesy email. We may inform them of something, but we're not going to sell them. And so especially, and I'm thinking also on social media, how I've chosen to take action on this uh, is that, you know, maybe your ratio of promotional to um, entertainment, you know, educational uh, content that's you think, okay, for every 10 posts, I'm going to do one post that's selling. Okay. Instead, what would happen if you just gave value all the time? What do you think would happen to your social media post? Is it possible you might miss on a sale, uh, miss out on a sale in the short term? Yeah. Um, but what would happen if you just focused on giving the absolute best content you possibly could on your social media? Uh, feed on your social media channel. Well, what would happen is that people would grow to know, like, and trust you more and more and more and more. Also, let's talk about some other things. <laughs> so no spamming, no overselling on your social media, no pop-ups, no traditional sales funnels. Those things are all going along the wayside. And again, this is not based on just theory. This is based on evidence. And when you read the book or listen to the book, Marketing Rebellion, Mark will share the statistics of what consumers are saying. And again, if you want to just test this, ask yourself, what do you like? Also, ads, ads, and more ads. People don't like to be sold to. And now with more, we're just bombarded with brand messages uh, than ever before. Um, it's just not as effective as it used to be. And I'm about to share something with you that totally blew my mind. And it's when I get to number two, and, and that's uh, your marketing is not your own. So in relation to that, okay, just to sum up this number one, respect your customers. Okay. At Up My Influence, we've removed, uh, you know, again, for our social media, it's all about giving value. It's all about serving the audience and people are smart and we're going to treat them as super, super smart people and we're just going to give them value. And if they want to come find us and see how we can engage at that next level, we get to let them take the lead in that dance. So um, I'll just kind of close, uh, you, know, what, you know, what we should focus on instead, again, just give lots of value, be prolific. Uh, and, and focus on growing your authority. And I've talked about this before, and we talk about this frequently. And, you know, your marketing, well, in the words of Robert Stevens, who's the founder of Geek Squad, uh, this quote is pretty sobering. Marketing is the tax you pay for being unremarkable. So please write that down and consider that. And instead, focus on what can you do to drive value. So, Let's talk about marketing some more and we go into number two. Your marketing is not your own. Now, according to Mark and a lot of research that exists out there, two thirds of your marketing is not your marketing. For big brands, it's two thirds, you know, and you think of like all the money that's spent in advertising, that is now shrinking in terms of the total marketing that's being done. So. If, if our marketing is not our own marketing, wh wh who's doing the marketing? The market is doing the marketing. Businesses must be built on consumer-generated marketing activities instead of traditional advertising. What am I talking about? Well, this is how consumers buy stuff today, and that's, this is how they choose to engage with people. They read reviews. They engage with their peers on social media. They engage with their peers in other ways. They, com they read comments, uh, they uh, read blog posts, they watch videos, they listen to podcasts, they research. People are doing more research than ever before, especially when it comes to higher ticket sales. I was a part of a, um, 
kind of a pricey uh, marketing group for quite a while and I went through a high ticket sales course and man, it just left me feeling icky uh, because I would never fall for those Jedi mind tricks about these old school used car salesman closing techniques. Guys, it just doesn't work anymore. Um, consumers rebel against this sort of thing. And again, if you want the evidence, just read Mark's book. Okay, and so give you a great example uh, of a very, very big company that I engaged with and ended up doing a lot of advertising. I'm going to do a lot more advertising because I really loved the experience. Um, and that th this morning was uh, Walmart uh, pickup. And so I needed to buy a bag or a box of sandwich bags uh, last night because uh, my boys were running out. I packed the lunches and I knew, uh oh, I only have like one or two left. And so I went on Amazon and usually stuff like that on Amazon, it's not a very good price. And so I thought, well, where would I buy it? Well, the cheapest price is probably going to be at Walmart. And so, I, you know, I should check, uh, so I checked the Walmart, the regular Walmart app, which I had, and I thought they, I, it, it gave me an option and said, you know, hey, this is a grocery item. Do you want to download the Walmart grocery app? I'm like, okay. And then sure enough, I download that and it says, well, this is part of Walmart delivery. So here's how it works. You know, you just add your items to a cart, add your payment method, boom, check out. And then you go, we go pick all the stuff and bring it out to your car. And I'm like, okay, I've seen that. I've seen the orange signs. I'm going to go check it out. So I went through, had a great user experience. There were moments of delight. As a first-time customer, I got $10 off. And so I uh, ended up my produce. It took me like five minutes to buy all of my produce. I didn't have to spend that. I did that, you know, in the comfort of my bed and just kind of ordering all that stuff. It was awesome because I could price compare really easily. I needed some other other items and ended up getting all my groceries, uh, added it to my cart, applied a coupon code, uh, and then uh, had it ordered and I picked it up this morning and it was awesome. And it was really cool because I don't really have a strong brand affinity for Walmart, to be honest with you, uh, particularly uh, with their produce. However, as I showed up, pulled right in, the app immediately communicated to Walmart that I was on the way because I checked in and then it, it let them know, okay, Josh is pulling in the parking lot. I pull right into the parking spot, guy comes up and they picked the right guy for the job. His name was Isaiah and Isaiah, his personality was like, if you've ever ridden uh, in an Uber with a really cool Uber driver, that was Isaiah's personality. So, um, of, of, you know, maybe you might think of like some Walmart uh, folks as being maybe not incredibly motivated to climb uh, the corporate ladder. Uh, Isaiah had an attitude where this guy was like, he liked his job and he had a great attitude and he was a perfect person for this. And so meanwhile, I'm on Facebook where I've got, yeah, I don't know, 3,000 people or whatever that uh, follow me on Facebook. So I'm like posting uh, all of everything that's going on. I'm showing pictures. I'm like, all right, this is awesome. Walmart gave me like a, a, a refer a friend link that I could share. So of course I shared that. Um, and because I get $10 off every order for anybody that, um, that also uh, uses my link. I'm talking about it now. And so there are probably people who are watching this video who are now going to get the Walmart. Uh, they're going to do the Walmart. Walmart deliver or not deliver the Walmart pickup thing. So this is kind of what you want. You want to give them. You want to give a great user experience. Make it frictionless. Uh, provide moments of delight where there are parts of the way that you provide your product. And I'll get into this in a future video that just elate people. Okay, got to get going because I need to finish up with number three. And this is again another another very sobering fact. And that is is that. Customers are no longer loyal to companies. And I'll read this little excerpt here. Research shows that we're in the post-loyalty era. 87% of our customers shop around and the primary reason is that there is no emotional connection to brands. Customers form an emotional connection by evaluating the brand's warmth and competency. Companies are people too. Okay, one way to demonstrate those traits is by elevating, this is what you want to do, elevate human connections between the founder, our employees, and the customers 
who need us. See, people don't trust companies, brands, or ads, but we trust each other. Okay, that's why it upped my influence. We're not really uh, an, an influencer engagement agency where, uh, let's say, who's this? Uh, Iron Man would say, hey, we got this great new sunglasses and we want you to help us get lots of uh, you know, media for this. Instead, what we focus on is we like to focus on the people associated with Iron Man. So we work with the executives. We work with um, entrepreneurs that are thoughtful and are upward rising. And we connect those people with influencers, those business leaders with media. And that's where the magic is done. Uh, we've believed in this for quite some time. And now the evidence is continuing to back up our theories. So why not build those human connections? Okay, and in Mark Schaefer's words, this is the essence of marketing today. Providing value and earning trust through human impressions so our customers carry our story forward. In fact, one of our five core values at Up My Influence is human connection, where we harness the power of relationships to create sustainable collaboration. If you want to know, by the way, our other core values, uh, we're a purpose-driven company. Um, we're all about our why, and we have five core values. You can go to upmyinfluence.com and click on the About tab, and you can look and see exactly what we stand for. Um, and this is more important than ever. Uh, and there's a whole chapter on building an artisan brand and why consumers are really after this. And again, all of this, by the way, if you're just joining, our, uh, this is all from the book, uh, Marketing Rebellion by Mark Schaefer. So let me ask you a question. What brands and products are you loyal to? And so here's a great exercise. List the reasons. Think of all the brands that you really, really like. Okay. For me, I really like Disney. Uh, I really like Under Armour. Um, I like Apple. Uh, I like, um, uh, you know, I, I like, uh, you know, there's there's some entrepreneurial brands that I'm a big fan of. You know, I, I, I think that, um, gosh, there's so many. I love Mark Schaefer. I love the work that he does. And I want you to ask the question of like, as you, as you think of the brands and write down maybe like three to five brands that you like, maybe come up with some really big ones and then maybe come up with some other uh, other smaller brands, but you think that they really are putting out a great message. Now, that's the first part. Then list the reasons you might be loyal. Like, why are you loyal to those products? What do they stand for, right? What are their values? What is the value that they give to you? What have they done for you, right? And so you continue to give them money time after time after time. What is it? Why do you do that? And so what can you learn from those brands and how can you embrace that as you serve your audience, as you provide a more frictionless experience for them, as you give them more and more and more value? And again, the great, and I'll just kind of close with this, and it is the uh, Stephen R. Covey's kind of funeral experience. And so imagine that you're on your way to a funeral and it's a very dear person. And when you get there, you realize that it's you in the casket. And so as you look around, you see people whose lives that you've touched. You see your loved ones. You see your friends. You see your coworkers, um, peers within your industry. And they all get up and they have a moment to speak on what you mean and meant to them. What would you hope that they would say? So right there, that should give you some clarity. Please do this exercise. Uh, Mark will tell you in, in his book, he said it was life-changing for him when he went through this exercise. That is the thing that you should be focused on. The stuff that they said. He was a caring, giving man. He made me a better person. So a lot of us are maybe focused on achieving. A lot of us are focused on just, you know, maybe monetary success. But is that what you want people to say for your fun at your funeral? 
Well, if not, then maybe money isn't the be all end all. Maybe it isn't the most important thing in your life. And instead, maybe it is making the world a better place, inspiring people to do better. You know, for us, you know, at Up My Influence, we have a fundamental belief that we believe that every person has a unique message that can positively impact the world. See, we believe that influence should be democratized. This is what drives us. I'm sick and tired of business owners being shut out from being able to get their message out because I know that you can have the best product or service in the world, but if nobody hears it, then you're gonna be out of business. And so I've experienced this. I have failed in business six times. Some of those failures were really spectacular. It sucked, it hurted, it hurt my family, it hurt my marriage, it hurt, I cried so many times uh, because of my previous failures in business. And so long ago, I decided that if I ever made it in business, that I would do everything in my power to help other business owners not have to go through so much pain. And I know more than anything that it's about building one's authority. It's about earning that respect because if you have a lot of authority, if you have a lot of influence, if people respect you and they appreciate you and you've got an audience and they can see that you associate with other influencers and they can see you've got social proof and they can they can see that you can demonstrate the success of your product. Hey, how's it going? Uh, FLKY Muffin. Thank you so much for joining us on Instagram. And so um, if people can sense those three things, again, social proof, your associations, and have you done the deal? Do you really care about them? Do you have products and services? Um, and have you been successful at doing what you do? And if they do, you cannot help but become successful. And that's our mission to help drive that for so many people. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this YouTube live. Um, I promise that, uh, you know, again, at the beginning, I'm starting this experiment in 2019. Um, we've got a great audience on Instagram. We've got a great audience on Twitter. Um, YouTube, we're starting right at the beginning. So thank you so much. If you're going back and maybe you're watching this a year later and you're like, man, that Josh Elledge guy really blew up on YouTube. I hope you are saying that. <laughs> I don't know because I'm talking about what happened in the future, uh, but I can only hope uh, that that was the case. But I hope that you'll grow with me and I hope that you'll be a part of our tribe. And so please go to YouTube. Please subscribe to this channel. I promise to bring you as much value as I possibly can. I promise to provide free coaching every single week so that I can help inspire you to grow your influence, to grow your authority, and ultimately grow your revenue. Revenue. So with that, guys, thank you so much. We're going to go ahead and stop the stream and I look forward to joining you next week. Again, make sure you hit subscribe, make sure you hit the bell and make sure you check us out over at upmyinfluence.com. Love to engage with you and love to bring value with you and help to turn you into a media celebrity in 2019 and be